In this video, we'll talk about negations, kind of what it means to negate a phrase and what it means to negate a statement. And these negations are very important in terms of proofs, especially for contrapositives. So if we're trying to prove H implies C, well, the contrapositive would be not C implies not H. And it just kind of gives us a way to talk about how to break down a statement even further from a logical standpoint. So let's talk about negation of a phrase. This is fairly simple. If, for instance, we're talking about a phrase, and let's say it's A, where A represents a phrase, well, the negation of that So the negation of A would be not A. And that one seems to follow pretty logically. If A is what I start with, if I want to not achieve A, well, it's not A. So to put it in terms of an example, if A was x equal 4, well, not A would be x does not equal 4. So x could literally be anything but 4. If, for example, we have x is greater than 2, well, not a could be x is less than or equal to 2. It accounts for the other case. So it's not always just not equal to. It might be the opposite of whatever the original statement is. The opposite, or if I'm just saying it's not greater than 2, that means that it could be equal it could be less than. I just have to account for all those possibilities. If this is not happening, what does that mean? That's basically the question we're asking ourselves. Now, the difficult question of how do I negate an entire statement? So how would I negate something of H implies C, a conditional statement? Well, if I think about it, if we go back to our A and our not A, when A is satisfied, not A is not. And when A is not satisfied, not A is. So they're kind of like reverse logical equivalents. When one is true, the other can't be. So if we think about this H implies C, we think about when it's true. We think about, okay, when H is satisfied and C is satisfied, it's true. When H is not satisfied, it's vacuously true. But however, if H is satisfied and C is not, then it's false. So if we're trying to, to uh, negate an entire statement, this turns into H and not C. So if I wanted to negate an entire statement, I just have to rewrite what it would be as a counterexample. So if we're talking about a generalization, this is worth talking about. So if we negate a generalization, I'm using the shorthand here for generalization, this is the same thing as an existence. And again, I'm using the shorthand. So like if we think about we're trying to negate something that's a generalization. Our counterexample just has to be one case. If I'm trying to disprove Pythagorean theorem, all I have to do is come up with one right triangle that disproves it. And likewise, if I'm negating an existence statement, well, this is a generalization. So if I'm trying to disprove something where there exists a right triangle with a side length of two, that means I have to go through every single right triangle and prove that none of them are two. This one, very difficult to prove. But that's how we kind of think about it. We would essentially write what would need to happen in order to create a counterexample. So usually if you're talking about negating a generalization, you're going to start with there exists. And if you're trying to negate an existence statement, you're going to start with for all something. It's just kind of a way of getting yourself started. So let's talk about De Morgan's Laws. De Morgan's Laws deals with 
and an or. So this is kind of more part of the, uh, the phrase, not the statement. And it's a, it's a bit weird. So if I'm trying to negate, let's start with an and statement, not A and B, where A and B are sets or phrases. Usually when we talk about De Morgan's Laws, we go with the Venn diagrams. Let's uh, consider them to be sets for the moment, just for the sake of our argument here. So basically what this is saying, if we just consider A and B, that means it's only what A and B have in common. If I'm trying to negate that, well, this means that x could be, if it's not where the green x is, it can't be in the middle. That means it could be an A, but not in B. It could be in B, but not an A. Or it could be not in either. So what we would say is that it's not A or not B. So that means either it's not in this circle or it's not in this circle. That would allow for these kind of crescent moon shape pieces that we got where the middle piece is pretty much taken out of the equation. That's the first De Morgan's Law. The second one deals with AND or with OR. So if we're looking it's not A or B Now, if we think about where this could land in A or B, let's not worry about the negation yet. Could be in the middle. Could be just in A. Could be just in B. Those are our options. I'm telling you it's not there. So that leaves outside. So this would be logically equivalent to it's not A and not B. So it's kind of weird. If you negate an and, it becomes an or. If you negate an or, it becomes an and. And they kind of go hand in hand. And again, this Venn diagram thing kind of helps illustrate the point. But this can be useful if we're trying to negate a phrase, especially if we're trying to rewrite a contrapositive where we have an or and an and, and that happens a lot, so that we can rewrite them to where we have a little help.